Fertilization begins when a sperm cell successfully reaches an egg inside the fallopian tube. Millions of sperm enter the vagina during intercourse, but only a small number manage to travel through the cervix and uterus to reach the tube where the egg waits. Each sperm carries half of the genetic material needed to form a new human life. The egg carries the other half. When one sperm pushes through the outer layer of the egg, their genetic materials combine. This single cell union is called a zygote, the first stage of a developing embryo. Immediately after fertilization, the zygote begins dividing, creating more and more cells as it travels toward the uterus. Over the next few days, the dividing ball of cells becomes a structure called a blastocyst. It reaches the uterus where it needs to attach to the uterine lining, a process called implantation. The lining, also called the endometrium, has been thickening throughout the menstrual cycle to prepare for possible pregnancy. If implantation succeeds, the body begins releasing hormones that prevent menstruation and help support the pregnancy. These hormones, including human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG, signal the ovaries to continue producing progesterone, which keeps the uterine lining stable and nourished. Once implanted, the blastocyst starts growing into two main parts, the embryo itself and the placenta. The placenta is a temporary organ that forms a connection between the developing baby and the parent's blood supply. It delivers oxygen and nutrients while removing waste products, acting like a life support system. The amniotic sac also forms, filling with amniotic fluid that cushions the embryo and protects it from bumps, changes in temperature, and infection. During the first trimester, which covers weeks 1 through 12, the embryo undergoes rapid changes. Major organs begin forming, including the heart, brain, liver, and kidneys. By around the sixth week, the tiny heart starts to beat. Although the embryo is still only a few centimeters long, its facial features and limb buds begin to take shape. At this stage, the developing nervous system is especially sensitive, so proper nutrition and avoidance of harmful substances are important. Early pregnancy symptoms often occur because of hormonal changes. Fatigue results from the body using extra energy to support development. Nausea and vomiting, often called morning sickness, occur as rising hormone levels affect the digestive system and brain centers involved in nausea. By the end of the first trimester, the embryo is now called a fetus. The basic structures of all major organs are present, although they still need to grow and mature. The placenta becomes fully functional, allowing it to take over hormone production from the ovaries. This usually results in reduced nausea for many pregnant people, as hormone levels become more balanced. In the second trimester, from weeks 13 to 26, the fetus grows more rapidly. Muscles and bones strengthen and movement becomes more coordinated. Many people first feel fetal movement, sometimes described as fluttering. Around this time, the fetus begins to swallow small amounts of amniotic fluid, which helps develop the digestive system. Taste buds form and developing ears start to detect sound. The lungs continue growing, forming branching airways, although they will not be fully ready for breathing until late in pregnancy. The second trimester is often physically easier than the first because energy levels improve and nausea decreases. However, as the uterus expands, the growing weight can place pressure on surrounding organs. This may lead to back discomfort heartburn as the stomach is pushed upward, or increased urination as the bladder is compressed. These changes occur because the expanding uterus needs more space and nearby structures must adjust. The third trimester, from weeks 27 to 40, focuses mostly on growth and final development. The fetus continues gaining weight, forming layers of fat beneath the skin to help with temperature control after birth. The brain develops rapidly, increasing in size and complexity. The lungs mature, producing a substance called surfactant that keeps the air sacs open and allows breathing after birth. The fetus begins practicing breathing movements, even though there is no air in the uterus. These motions strengthen the respiratory muscles. As the fetus grows, the uterus stretches significantly. The abdominal wall thins and movements may feel stronger. The body prepares for labor by softening the cervix and producing irregular, usually painless contractions called Braxton Hicks contractions. These practice contractions help tone the uterine muscles but do not indicate active labor. 
Near the end of pregnancy, the fetus typically rotates so the head points downward, easing passage through the birth canal. If the baby remains in a breech position, feet or buttocks down, health care providers may attempt to gently turn the baby or discuss alternative delivery options. Labor usually begins when hormonal signals from both the parent and the fetus trigger stronger, regular uterine contractions. The process happens in three main stages. In the first stage, contractions gradually open the cervix. Opening is called dilation, and thinning of the cervix is called effacement. These changes allow the baby to move downward. Contractions grow longer, stronger, and closer together as the body works to widen the cervix to about 10 centimeters. In the second stage of labor, pushing begins. With each contraction, abdominal and uterine muscles work together to move the baby through the birth canal. The head typically appears first, followed by the shoulders and the rest of the body. Once the baby is born, the airway clears and the newborn takes the first breath. This moment triggers the lungs to fully expand for the first time. The third stage of labor involves delivering the placenta. After the baby is born, the uterus continues contracting, causing the placenta to separate from the uterine wall. These contractions also help reduce bleeding by closing the blood vessels that previously supplied the placenta. After childbirth, the uterus gradually returns to its pre-pregnancy size, a process called involution. Hormones shift again, preparing the body for recovery and, if desired, breastfeeding. The entire journey from fertilization to birth reflects a remarkable series of coordinated events, each step essential to supporting and developing new life.